I guess we're ready to get rolling here. So, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Partial Frameworks, the analog to digital. I want to explain a little bit about digital and how we all need to really be careful entering into this digital age. I had the opportunity to go up to Iron Mountain, Michigan and work at the VA hospital up there. And they were having about a four to six week turnaround time to see their patients. By the time they prepped to get the stuff back, get the patient back in and seat it, four to six weeks. And this is when all the big scandal was going on with the VAs. So we went in there and installed a system and they got it down to four days. So four days, four days to deliver the cases back. So, but while I was there, the prosthodontist explained to me, he says, my father's a dentist, a general dentist here in the hospital on another floor. He does digital extractions. Digital extractions. I was like, okay, what kind of machine does this guy have that's going in there and pulling a tooth? He says, no, digital extractions. Taking his fingers and pulling the tooth out. Okay, well that's digital. Now here's where it gets scary. I'm 50 years old. My wife is now pushing me to go get that exam. Okay. I saw an ad in the paper, digital prostate exam. I thought, oh, cool. <laughs> Digital prostate exam. Okay, so be careful when it says digital. What's digital? So, anyway, our partials are digital, so we are going digital. And I got to tell you, it's uh, yesterday's class was easier than today's. So I got some important people in here today. I got a Kim who runs my CAD, CAD CAM department here watching me, so she's gonna go back and tell everybody what a terrible job I did. And the topper is my partial guy is here watching me who didn't know that I was doing this. So he's here also, but I'm glad I get to show it to him. So anyway, partial dentures, analog to digital. Definition of an RPD, we all know that. You know, it's appliance to replace missing teeth, tissue supporting bone, when one or more natural teeth are still there. Purpose of an RPD to restore a patient's appearance, chewing ability without damaging the natural teeth and supporting tissue. This comes from the US Air Force manual, the Bible, if you will. What they tell us though is that of the three things listed here, there's really only two important ones. Appearance is not one of them. Replace the chewing ability and not damage anything, don't hurt anything. That's the two big ones. Now, if you get good looks out of it, great, but the other two are more important. So that's the Air Force manual. Is there a need today for RPDs and dentures? Everybody's saying, well, you know, we're going implants. I've got doctors that tell me we don't do partials. We don't do dentures anymore. Everything's implants. It's our biggest profit center. Okay, great. <coughs> Could be. Good for you, doc. You know, but there's still a lot of them out there doing them. And if you look at it, the ADA told us in 2009 the average price of a crown was $9.45 from a doctor. That's okay if you need one. What happens when you need two, three, four, five, six? Start multiplying. That gets very expensive. Look at three, uni three units to have three teeth replaced. $28.35. Now, I'm a lab owner. At that point, I'm starting to think, am I going to get an implant or am I going to get a partial? Truthfully, I'd probably look at the partial at this point. I don't have dental insurance, and most of them don't cover implants, so it's coming out of my pocket. So I would seriously look at having a partial frame done. Of course, it'd probably be crown supported with some nice attachments, et cetera, but nonetheless. Look at the cost of a partial denture. Cast metal framework, $1,100 to $1,800. So now if I'm doing three teeth or more, we're right up there. Acrylic base, $700 to $1,100. Flexibles, Valplast, $1,000 to $1,400. So it's a reasonable option for people that are missing teeth. What about as a business, as lab owners? Is it worth it for us to do partials? Well, according to the article in IDT, 
we're all growing older. I'm 50, got to get the exam. But anyway, I'm getting older. I'm going to be in that group pretty soon that's going to say that was somewhere in there says that by 2050, we're going to be over 65. It's going to increase to $3.6 billion by 2019. That's quite a business. So doing partial denture, do we have any partial denture people in here? Quite a few, okay, I gotta watch what I say. <laughs> we all know how it ta what it takes to do an analog partial. It's a lot of work. It, it is, and I have to say, and I have to compliment you guys because it is truly an art form. If you really look at the frameworks that are done, they're really beautiful pieces of work. My uh, partial guy years ago that taught me how to do them said, you know, they look like fish lures, but they are pretty. So what do we have to do? We have to get the models in, we have to pour them and prep them. Pick the bubbles off, block them out a little bit, get them ready. Draw a design on it. So you have to know the theory of partials a little bit and draw your design. Survey and block out. That's quite a step there. Two steps. Duplicate it. Wait for the hydrocolloid to set up. Pour your refractory model. Then you have to dry the refractory model, put it in the beeswax to seal it. All that good stuff, quite a bit of work. Then we're gonna break out our plastic patterns and start putting our puzzle together. Now, when I got out of college, and I did learn these in college, our partial guy would let me wax the frameworks for him. So I learned quite a bit from him, but it really became a challenge with him in that whatever I did, he always had to change it. I would draw his, follow his things perfectly. But you know, I, I would actually take it, take it to my dad. I said, Dad, look at this. Does it look all right to you? I said, Man, that looks beautiful. You followed it perfectly. Everything looks good. <coughs> Bob, take a look at that. Looks good to me. Take it over. Take it over to Jay. Go into Jay's room. Jay's in there with his cigarette hanging out of his mouth. <laughs> Ashes everywhere. Picks up his instrument. Puts it in the Bunsen burner, picks up some wax, and flows wax on it every time. Every time. It's like, it's human nature. We all do it. We have to put our touch on it. That's what he had to do. So, but he's a great guy. He's passed away, and I really wonder what he would think about all this today. So, but it's neat to see. Anyway, so we wax it up with our patterns and some wax. Then we have to invest it. It's usually a two step investment. You put a nice thin coat on it to get all the details, and then you put it in the bulk investment. Burn it out. Cast it. Knock it out. Devest it, sandblast it. Then fitting and refinement, that's fun. That's, that's the big one there. How much time do you spend doing that? Of course, if you waxed it right, surveyed it right, did all the stuff right, it shouldn't be bad. But then electro polishing or tumbling. Some people use tumblers, giant rock tumblers, or you can electro polish. Then final polish and high shine. And of course, when you get to that final high shine, what happens? <laughs> Boom! It gets caught in the rag wheel, goes flying, tears your finger. Part of the part of it. I got. I think we counted one day. I got 36 different scars on my right hand. So most of them are from doing stuff like that. So anyway. That's the steps for doing a conventional partial frame. So there's a lot of labor, a lot of time. It takes us quite a while to do them. So let's look at what, what does it take to do a digital partial frame. Pour and prep, we still have to do that. Now, now we're gonna scan it with our Ineos X5 intelligent robotic scanner. Why is it intelligent, why is it robotic? If you look at our competitor's scanners, they work on a three axis gimbal. They move on a set pattern, certain way. If it misses data, you have to do something about it. Either reset the models, move stuff, redo your scan. You'll have, if you watch ours, and I encourage you to go down and watch ours down in the main hall. Okay, I know, they, they always tell you, put your phone on silent, I'm guilty. And it's my Sarek specialist, so I'll just hang up on him. Sorry about that. If you watch our scanner, 
it'll start moving. It's a five axis scanner. It will actually stop and think. Everybody thinks there's a problem with it. Oh my God, it's pausing. What's wrong? It's thinking. It actually thinks to see what data is missing. How do I have to move to capture this data? So it will fill in the data. If it doesn't do it, you don't have to start over. You just find the spot, you double click on the screen, the camera swings around, takes the image and stitches it in. Very efficient. Our competitors also have problems with very deep palettes for partials because they have a set focal length. The camera's mounted, the gimbal's mounted. Our camera is on a track. It moves itself up and down. The arm moves itself up and down at different angles. From what our competitors have told me, they have produced frameworks with as much as 10 millimeters of gap underneath the pallet. That's sticking my little finger underneath the pallet. Ours are adapted beautifully, perfectly. So the intelligent robotic scanner is a big part of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to determine our insertion axis. This is where we used to play with our surveyor. Have to sit there and determine what angle is it going to go in right? Does the patient put it in the mouth and pull it forward? Do they drop it in from the front? Does it go straight in down from the side? Took us time to sit there and decide this. Now the computer is going to help us do this very quickly. Virtual blockout. No longer do we have to sit there with wax after we surveyed it and block everything out straight down. Computer does it. All undercuts are removed. From that point, we're going to clear some space. And I'm hoping at the end that we have enough time that I'll run through a quick demo of the software. So we add our components, retention, class, rest, et cetera. This is another, spot, another place that sets us apart from our competition. Our competition has a set order that you have to follow in putting components on. You have to put your mesh on, and then you have to do this, you have to do this. So when you get to the end and you say, oh, man, I should have put this mesh over here more. Well, now you've got to back up all the way back to it. Ours, no, no order of operation. You can back up, you can move things, click and activate them. We can go as so far as that we can all, go all the way back to our insertion axis and our block out and change those during the design process. So very flexible system. So after we get all our patterns on there, we're gonna combine them. The computer's gonna just join everything together into one piece. We're going to smooth the pattern, add support materials if we need them, and export them for manufacturing as a, PD, as a PF or STL file. PF is our format for partial frame software. Um, with our system, you have the option of buying an STL license. Um, it's the only annual license that we sell. But if you have it, you can export these anywhere you like. If you don't have it, you can simply send them to Infinident, and Infinident will have them manufactured for you. So our manufacturing options, and these are the ones that we've been using, is Infinident and 3D RPD. These guys are here. Highly recommend you go by and see them. Fantastic system. Really impressive. SLM printing of metal. So we're not milling this out. We're not waxing it and casting it. It's direct printing of metal. They start with a platter, if you will. Put 20 microns of metal on it. Press it down, laser welds the first layer together. Another 20 microns of metal, welds it together. So this thing just grows up out, off of the plate. Very accurate, very dense. I did a training in Murrieta, California, and one of the guys in the class, he said, hey, you mind if I bend this class to see how flexible it is? I'm like, oh man, here we go. He's gonna snap my clasp off. And I thought, okay, he's gonna do it on the table like you know, a good a partial guy does. I said, yeah, go ahead. He reaches in his bag and pulls out a pair of three-nose pliers. Who travels with three-nose pliers? <laughs> I said, okay, now here's the deal. Every good partial person knows you get three bends. On number four, it's gonna break. I said, so you get three. He bent it three times and it did not break. I stopped him. It was a show model. I wasn't gonna let him <laughs> go number four. But they are very flexible, very dense no porosity in the castings. That's a problem that we deal with a lot of partial frames. So, Anyway, I deal quite a bit with these people. I love it because I get the partial frameworks back finished. They're done. And I know right now my partial guy's sitting in the back going, son of a, but 
you're getting most of them, okay? You get, occasionally I have to do a case for Serona, you're getting everything else, so. He takes good care of us, I gotta take care of him. So, anyway, open STL. So you, if you have the open STL license, you can send it wherever you want. You can send it 3D RPD, Valplast, 3D Systems, Stratasys, and Envision Tech, make printers. If you wanna buy your own printer, you can print them in house. And actually, 3D Systems makes the metal printer that 3D RPD does. And so for a mere $600,000, you could have one of your own and do them in-house. <laughs> That's all. So, and actually, I, I got to go when I was at Bethesda Naval training them. They have a titanium printer. And I wanted to put one in there. The guy wouldn't let me print up a titanium part. I thought, man, would well, that be cool? But they, they do it for the wounded warriors and bless them for the job they're doing. And if you ever get the opportunity to see someplace like that, it, it'll move your heart. I mean, it's just something to see and see what they do for our guys. So just a quick overview of steps here for, for our digital insertion axis, block out, put our components together, combine them. That's an STL. That's how it goes out as an STL file. There's the finished job. That's how it comes back to me. Oh, went. So anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the software and I'll show you and run through a, a quick partial frame on how to do it. Um, trying to think what I was gonna say there with, with 3D RPD and with the uh, outsourcing. I do have one up here if you guys would like to see it afterwards. Let me see I, and of course now I get to switch from Mac to Windows, so. Okay, so I'm gonna, I know what I had to tell you. At this point, the partial framework software does not have scan capability. You cannot scan directly into the software. You have to scan into the in-lab software. At the top, you might have seen an array, there's a little button that says run application. Usually it's grayed out for you guys. It'll be highlighted. You click on it, it'll open up the partial framework software and import the thing directly in. All right. So I'm going to simply go in. I already did my scan, so I'm just going to open the case. And you can see I already have it done. And no, this is not a cooking show. I will actually delete this. So we're going to come in, align our model very quickly in the arch. And we go into our define insertion axis. Very easy to move around. Look and see where my undercuts are, where I want to place my clasp. If my wife was here, she'd tell me why I'm doing it wrong. So I'm going to select OK. And tell me it's going to erase everything I did before. So that's fine. We want to do that. Here's our block out. Now, how long does it take you guys to block out a model? Can anybody do it that fast? So what we're going to do is take our remove tool here, and then based upon where my class tips are going, I'm just going to remove my block out. Okay, so order of operation, we'll just go forward. Again, I have all my tools here and, and items that I could place on here, but I don't have to follow any certain order. I can do whatever I want. If I want to put my base plate on it first, I can do that. I'm actually going to screw this one up on purpose. I'm actually come up over here. Put a bad corner on it. And there's my base plate. 
I can adjust the thickness of it to what I want. I can add it in. Now we look at it and say, okay, it's supposed to be an open pallet. And you, my college professor called them toilet seat partials. So I'm going to turn off my base plate there, which I can still see the outline. I'm going to come in with another base plate, draw it in here. I missed the bead there. Okay, so there's our toilet seat. I can still adjust it. I can just simply come up, take this yellow line, and drag things up to where I need them to go. How many in-lab users do we have here today? Okay, I'm going to show you something, and since we're live streaming, maybe the guys in Germany might even see it. This is something we want, and we need to let them know that we want this. The undo button. You know how we press undo and it undoes everything you just did? Well, in this software, it does it step by step. So what does that tell us? They know how to do it. They know how to do it one step at a time. So we want that in our in-lab software. So. so hopefully they'll hear us since we're going out there. Uh, base plate, draw the base plate, right? I got to tell you, I am not a partial denture guy on Crown and Bridge, but Serona gave us the software because we are a beta tester, and they gave it to two other guys because they're beta testers, and the other guy says, we, we don't know anything about partials. Let Mike do it. So here I am. So please forgive me if I goof something up. We can drag them, we can redraw them like we do a margin. All right, so let's add our retention in. With the retention, we have thickness, lift, how much room underneath it do we want, and the hole size. Turn that down a little bit. So all I do is double click. And I create an error, of course. So there's our retention. Now it gives me a choice here. Do I want holes on the border of it? And, or do I want square holes? I can add those also. If I'd rather have square instead of round. There we go. At this time, we don't have a way to design a crown and virtually seat it yet. They are working on it. 
So what's going to be nice is that when that doctor sends you that case, it says, okay, make me a crown with a rest seat for a future partial. With this software, very easily you'll be able to say, doc, I can do the whole thing for you. I can send back the crown with a matching frame. All right, so let's add our clasp in here. Now I select my clasp tool. It gives, well, I could go back to there. It gives me a choice between molar, premolar, and ring clasp. So I'm going to select the premolar here. And you can see down in the corner, we have our undercut measurement tool. So as I roll my mouse in there, it tells me how deep the undercut is. So based on that, I can double click, start my clasp. And add my clasp in. I have complete control over the thickness and the width. Put a connector on it. Let's add a couple rests of the cuspids here. All right, I'm not going to take the time to clasp everything here, but let's say we did put our finish lines on. Need a couple of a uh, ray. Single, I guess. Tissue stop. Okay, so we have all our elements on, because I didn't put a rest there or a clasp. We also have retention pins that we could add for teeth. So once we have them all combined, we're going to arrow forward, and the computer is going to just simply combine everything together. It will tell you if there's an element not added in. I do a much better job with a little more time and sitting at a desk and standing up and trying to move everything. There we go.
back when I did the base plate, I had a choice of putting it in as stippled or unstippled. I could still correct that. Um, I'm gonna come in with my smoothing tool first and maybe get rid of some of these creases that are in here. Smooth out my finish lines a little bit. Now with this tool, should have one here, where is it? There it is, add surface. So here I can actually come paint it on how I want it. Select apply and it adds stippling. So after we get done with our smoothing and doing the partial frame correct, correctly, we have our choice of it exported as a PF file or as an STL file. STL, again, you can send it anywhere you like. If you don't have that option, you can send it to Infinident and they will do the manufacturing for you. It goes from Infinident straight to 3D RPD and then back to you. So it, there's really no big deal in turnaround time or affecting it that way. So. We do Valplast with this also. Uh, we are a licensed Valplast laboratory. We, it's a little different process. What it is, they give you back a printed base plate with the clasp, flexible clasp. We set the denture teeth on it, send it to the doctor for trying. The patient actually gets to feel what the final appliance is gonna be like. The doctor can adjust it, grind on it, make any changes he wants to it, add wax if he wants to. What's gonna happen when it comes back, we're not gonna invest the model we're gonna direct invest the base plate with the teeth. Eliminates a lot of finishing. So we boil it out, pull the base plate out, put it back together, inject it. Very quick, very easy to finish. If you've finished Valplast before, you know it's not an easy material to work with. So he's up here like, oh yeah, he knows. <laughs> All right, well, that, that's pretty much it, guy. That's what I have for the partial denture software. I was gonna ask if anybody had questions, please. Are you able to add metal gummies? Not yet. I've told them we want them. They said they're working on them, so hopefully we'll do it. We'll be able to do it soon. What we can do at this point is that we can do a biocopy of denture teeth in place, and we'll show them, and we can actually put the lingual, put the metal up over the denture teeth, so we can have metal linguals on them, such as that. Hopefully, steel's facings be coming soon. I don't know if they're used a lot, but it's something that we need to have. Metal dummies. I, the, we're dealing with engineers who aren't technicians, and technicians trying to explain to engineers what we needed to do. And so they, they really didn't get the idea of a metal tooth. Why would you want a metal tooth? I said, well, we have that little tiny space between two and you need to fill it in, that's what we need it for. So they, they got it, they're working on it, we'll have it soon, I'm sure. So anybody else, any questions? This TL uh, cost for licensing? Serona's STL cost is $2,500 per year. It's the only license that's on an annual basis. So based upon how many frameworks you do, then you can determine if it's worth it or should I just send it to Infinident and let them do it for us. So, anybody else? Well, thank you for coming, guys, and hope to see you downstairs. Please check out our booths, and I know they're hard to find. We don't have very many down there. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.